All right, so the final UFC card of 2023, UFC 296, Vicente Luque versus Ian Gary. How do you think this fight's going to go? Man, I would love to come in here and say Vicente Luque is going to teach Aaron. Ian. Aaron Gary. Aaron. I mean, at this Ian point, Gary. if he loses, we can change his name to whatever we want, right? That's what he did. Uh, <laughs> I would love to see Vicente Luque, the silent assassin, come in, teach the 26-year-old a lesson. I don't I think, think he can do it. I think these odds are this way for a reason. I think Ian Gary comes in. I think Ian Gary gets the win. I think he stays undefeated. Vicente Luque, he's... I think he is a gatekeeper. He's a guy, he's very talented. But he's proven he's not at the top of the top. Right. So he's to see, like, how legit are you. Look, he's a legit top 10 guy. He's not a top 5 guy. So what's Ian Gary? Everybody can talk all the shit they want. Ian Gary is 13-0. and 0. He's 6-0 and 0 in the UFC. And he's taking on and willing to take on any skilled opponent. But to your credit and to anybody's credit, Vicente Luque is a very skilled opponent. I think the odds here are showing exactly how prominent Ian Gary is in the welterweight division. Minus 400 is the money line here, and I think he pays that through. I think this is going to be a striking heavy match where Ian Gary does what he said he's going to do and win. 14-0 and 0 is, is in his future, in my opinion. I think Ian Gary gets a dub, too. One interesting thing to look at, though, Vicente Luque. He's been in the UFC since 2015. He has 13 UFC finishes. That's so a lot of finishes. That's a lot of finishes. He's a guy that could... This isn't... Ian Gary's not just going to roll over him, but I, I do agree that I think Ian Gary gets the dub. And the next fight we move on to, this is maybe the people's main event. Man, this one's crazy. This is crazy that this fight's even happening The to guy me. that the consensus MMA fandom loves, Tony Elkuku... El Kukui Ferguson coming in a six fight losing streak at 39 years old. The guy who has recently become what a majority of MMA fans hate, Patty the Batty Pimblet. I love Patty. I love Patty too. He's 4 0 in the UFC. Yes. Riding his, high, riding his, on the hype. His last fight was a contract. He should have lost the fight, but he won by split decision. But he's also a guy that's 20 and 3. He has three UFC finishes. So he's not. People love to talk shit on him. Just because of his last fight, but like he's but he a has legit MMA him. fighter. He's right. twenty he, he and three. He choked out Jordan Levitt. He won split decision over Jared Gordon. He was cage warrior champ before he came over. Like Michael Bisping has done that. Like look and argue. Like he's not twenty and three in his career, and he's he finishes done, people. Okay, the the other fan favorite, Molly McCann. He's done better than she has, and everybody still loves her. Now people hate on her online too. MMA crowd hates her. Uh, I like her. I like her too. <laughs> well, but, I mean, look, this is an interesting fight. Tony Ferguson, can he, should he retire? I think we all think yes. Six fights in a row losing. He's what, lost four? all his killers, but each one, like he's four of six of them have been like not decision. He's looked um, Old? worse and worse and older and older each each of these six fights. I just don't see any way. I'm not going to say any way. Tony is definitely going to stay in there, but I think Patty rises to the occasion. He's had a long time off. He just found out his wife's pregnant with twins. Whoop, whoop. So I Look, think he's going to have the motivation. He's the younger guy. He's the guy whose career is kind of hanging in the balance. He's 28. El Kakui's 39, like, in six losses in a row. I think Patty Pimlet rises to the occasion. He gets the dub. I think that I agree with you. But at the same time, if he beats Ferguson here, I think Patty Pimlet needs to be tested in the UFC next. I agree that he's going to win, but his next fight after this doesn't need to be a hype train fight. It needs to be a real contest in the lightweight division. I agree. Moving on to our next fight, we're going to have Shakvat Rokhmanov taking on Steven Wonderboy Thompson. The Nobad is 17-0 in his career, 5-0 in the UFC, finishing Every all of his appearances. Four Submissions, one take, TKO. Not only that, he's 17 and 0 with 17 finishes. It's crazy. Eight KOs, nine subs. The now, man can do it all. The Wonder Boy, Stephen Thompson. He's a black belt in karate. He's an excellent striker. His last fight was canceled. I think Michelle Pereira missed weight by like three pounds, so that was its own controversy. So that means his last time he's fought was exactly a year ago in right. December 2022. Right. Where he did beat up 
Kevin Holland, but he it's did, a long he time. He did beat Kevin Holland by doctor stoppage, which means Kevin Holland was willing to fight. The doctor said he couldn't go well, the, anymore. The team threw the towel in, too. So, so Wonder Boy, he's 40 years old. How's the layoff going to affect you? I could see it being positive for an older guy or negative. I could. I could definitely see that. I think somebody like Shockmont, Shockvot, Shavkot, sorry. Shavkot, Ron, Ron? I'm going to go with the Nomad. Rockmanov. Shavkot Rockmanov. That's Shavkat. such a hard name to say. I apologize. The Kazakhstani. The, the Nomad, I think he's going to come out. I think he's going to do what the line says. Minus 650 odds. As much as I don't want to say it, I think he is going to beat the Wonder Boy at his own game. I think he's going to be a striking-based bout, and I think Rachmanov is going to beat him on the feet. I think the same thing. A little preview to one of my bets later. I think this goes the under. I think Shavkat by finish. Fair enough. So we go on to the co-main event. What's that one? Co-main event, the first title fight of the night for the 125 title. Flyweight. Alex, the cannibal Pantoja, making his first title defense against a guy he beat not that long ago in Brandon Roy Val, Raw Dog. Crazy that that's your nickname, though, Raw Dog. Yeah, look, I, I dig it. He Look, Raw Dog is 15-6 and six in his career. He can make his nickname three, whatever he wants, in my opinion. Three wins in a row. His last loss? Pantoja. Two Pantoja. In 21, so it hasn't been that long ago. But 5-2 and two in the UFC, Roy Val. His two losses, Pantoja and Brandon Moreno. So, I mean, those are two like notable losses. A little bit of a fun fact for you. Pantoja's only lost by decision in his career. So that's, that's very interesting when Pantoja has a, an array of KO subs, decision victories, but he does not he get, get finished. finished. So I, I like that seeing that the new champ is going up against somebody he's already subbed as his first title defense. To me, it's not the UFC handing him his first victory, but it's handing him somebody he can beat to defend his title for the first time. I don't think the UFC wants the title to change hands, you know, in the first defense. At least give him some time to rep his country, get some ground behind him, perform a little bit. I think Pantoja wins wholehandedly this fight. So I think Pantoja wins, but I think it's going to be by uh, TKO KO. I think Roy Val, he's a, a submission guy. He got subbed by Pantoja the last time he, they fought. He did. So I think Roy Val is going to be very aware of that. He's going to be overly defensive to that, and I think that opens up Pantoja to hit him, piece him up a few times on the feet and get a TKO finish. I like that. All right. So now the main event, UFC 296. This is a fight that... Big fight for the welterweight title. A big fight is the just like the last title. Although Leon has defended it once, he's only fought one guy. I mean, he's fought in, at Usman. In Usman to get the title it, can and this then to defend it. Have stability. Usman was the champ for a while. Can Leon Edwards win, or is Colby Covington going to come in, avenge his two title losses, and just overwhelm Leon Edwards with cardio as so he does? In the presser, Covington's got got the win. Right on the yeah, press Leon side, does kind of stumble over his words sometimes. Yeah, he's a little he, corny. He, see, he he doesn't seem like that. His character is as well defined as Covington's is. It's not as artificial. Leon's just being a real guy, so he doesn't always have a comeback. Colby's completely manufactured personality. But we've also seen Covington take serious damage and walk back into the fight. No, he's tough. Say what you want about him, he's tough, and he has some of the best cardio in UFC. But. On the other hand, Leon Edwards hasn't lost since like 2015. He's had 12, one no contest since yeah, Mah- to 12, Muhammad. 12 Bilal fights Muhammad. unbeaten. 11 of those wins. And as you said, the one no contest, he poked Bilal in the eye real bad. Dude, it, it's it's a tough fight. I think Colby's Chaos coming is in the three. right nickname for Colby Covington because I think he's going to come in here, create some chaos in the presser, get people off their feet, get people kind of agitated, get Camp Edwards frustrated. And I think they're going to do enough and Camp Covington to win the fight. I picked Col- Colby Covington to get the belt back for America, the welterweight division. I completely disagree. I think Leon Edwards has been the more active fighter, better on the feet. He has good enough ground game. I think Colby's taken way too long off. He hasn't fought since March of 2022. I think Leon Edwards comes in, able to stuff a few takedowns, get Colby away from the fence, and knock him out. I got Leon Edwards by knockout. 